Up next, we're going to start tackling views, controllers, and routes. So to get started, let's create our directories. Right in my root, I'm going to create a new directory called resources, and inside resources, views. Again, we're following the convention of Laravel. Inside my views directory, I'm going to create a new file, simply titled test.blade.php. Nothing new here. We haven't done anything yet that we haven't done before. I'm going to do an h1 tag and just say working. So now we have a blade view that we can actually pull in. However, this view is still not being registered with our package. Let's handle that now. Base service provider. And in my registered resources, I'm going to add a new line. This load views from. And my path is going to be very similar to the one above. We're going to reach into the current directory and backup one and resources and views. So anything that resides inside that views directory will get loaded. Now load views requires a second parameter and that is simply a nickname that we're going to use to be able to access them. So very appropriately, I'm just going to call it press. So that is what we're going to use to actually call these views. However, how do we call a view without a route or without a controller? Well, we can't. So before we can even test this, we're going to have to add a routes file. So in the root of our package, we're going to add a new directory and we're going to call it routes. And inside of routes, we're going to create a new PHP file called web.php. Again, this is stuff that gets created for you when you are creating a fresh Laravel project, but in package development, you got to create all this stuff. So we're going to call the route and we're going to start with just calling a view. There's a nice convenient view method that you can call on route that does not require a controller. The first thing we pass in is what the URI is going to be. I'm just going to call it blog just for now. And what is the view that we're going to load? Well, views are loaded a little bit differently in a package than it would normally be. Normally you would say something like test and that would just work. However, this is not going to work because test is actually going to refer to the views that are stored in the project, not in the package, but in the project. So in order for us to be able to access this test.blade, we have to use the nickname that we passed in right here, this press. And this is how it's done. Press colon colon test. So what that does is puts all of our views in a separate namespace so you don't collide with the views of the user. If the user's project had a test.blade.php, it would collide with your package test.blade.php. So in order to avoid that, that's why we do the prefix. Now the notation for this is slightly different than what you're used to seeing, but that's just how it works. Let's jump to Chrome and check this out. Here in Chrome, I have my test dummy project pulled up and I'm just going to do slash blog. And we get a 404. Now this might be slightly confusing at first, but one thing you got to remember is that yes, we registered our views, but we did not register our routes file. So let's take care of that now. I'm going to actually do this inside a method that I'm going to call register routes. Let's go ahead and implement that now protect it and inside here I'm going to create a route group route group and the first parameter for route group is going to be an array of options I'm going to leave that blank for now and the second thing I'm going to pass in is a function and inside my function I'm going to load my web routes this load routes from and the path back to dir for current directory backup one and routes and web.php. So if we go back to the browser and we hit refresh, there we go. So our routes file is working. Remember, this working exclamation is actually coming from this test view that we created. Let's talk about how we're going to add some of these options here. Right now I'm passing an empty array. So I'm going to erase that and I'm going to call a new method that doesn't exist yet called route configuration. Let's implement that method. And in route configuration, we're going to return an array. Inside this array is where we're going to add our configurations. The first configuration I want to set is prefix. 
And this is going to be pretty typical if you're adding any routes to your package. You're going to want to prefix them because you do not want to run into an issue where your routes collide with the user's routes. The user's routes will always take precedence, so your package will just not function properly. So with a prefix, you avoid that. You're going to want a nice prefix, and in our case, our prefix is going to be configurable. So at first, we're going to add just a dummy blogs in here, but I do want to make that configurable, and I'm going to show you a nice way to do that. So let me go back to my browser. I'm going to hit refresh, and the page blows up again. And obviously, it's because we do not have our new blogs prefix. So I've added this prefix here. So blogs is coming from this route configuration here, prefix blogs. If I change this to something, and go back, hit refresh, it blows up again, change it to something, and we're back to working. So let me put this back to blogs. Perfect. Now, how do we make this configurable? Well, we're going to have to add that to the configuration file. Now, we could reach into the configuration file directly, but we have a very nice class that handles that for us. So let's use it now. Press, and I'm going to call a new method called path. In my source press, I'm going to add a new public static function path. And here, this is where we're going to reach into our config file. So config press.path. Now this obviously has not been set up yet, but one little trick that we can add here is config actually has an optional second parameter. And this is a default. In case config is not able to find the requested path, we want to be able to default to something. So in this case, we're going to default to blogs. It's a nice optional second parameter to allow configurations to have defaults. I do want to modify my press configuration and let's go down here and add a new entry path. This is going to allow our users to configure what the prefix is for their blog. Now once again, I've modified that config file. So let's remove it and let's go ahead and vendor publish it one more time. PHP Artisan, vendor publish, dash dash tag press config. So if we go back to Chrome, we're still working. However, now the user can customize that. I'm going to vim into this config, and I'm going to go ahead and modify this blogs to maybe be something new. OK, let me save and go back. We blow up again, but instead of blogs, now I can use new. Awesome. So that little prefix is now customizable by the user. Great. The next logical step here is that we're going to need some controllers. Let's add one now. In my sources directory, I'm going to add a new directory called HTTP, and inside that, controllers. This is your typical Laravel setup for controllers. Inside controllers, I'll add a new PHP class, and I'm going to call it test controller, just for now. As we've done before, this test controller is going to have to inherit from Laravel's controller. So let's do that now. Test controller extends controller, and that is illuminate routing controller. And let's add a method here, public function index, and I'm simply going to return a string in controller. Perfect. All right, now let's go back to my routes file and add a new route get, and let's just call this route controller. You're used to calling your controllers directly, right? Something like this. However, this is not going to work because this is going to look inside the controllers folder in the Laravel application, not in your package. So we do have to give it a full namespace. VicGonVT press HTTP controllers test controller index. Let's try it now. Controller. And sure enough, there we are in controller. One convenient configuration that we can add to our route group is a namespace. That way we would not have to do all of this. So I'm going to cut this out and I'm going to go to my base service provider. And in my route configuration, I'm going to add a new one. And this is called namespace. Inside namespace, I'm going to bring that back. So now in my routes file, I can continue to use the regular controller calls that I'm used to without having to do the full namespace. Let's go back to the browser, make sure that that's still working, refresh, and sure enough, we're still working.
So with these new changes, now our package can have routes, it can have views, and controllers.